So I am Simon van der Zande, and my film is called Merci pour votre patience, and uh, I studied at CASC. My film uh, Merci pour votre patience is a um, um, 15 minute bus ride that we co witness in, uh, in Brussels. Um, the passenger is sitting in uh, a chair locked into real time uh, observing uh, a bus driving in Brussels and the, the bus ride gets particularly tense when um, an African migrant um, Samuel gets on the bus and starts voicing loudly in the bus his frustrations with Europe. He's explaining um, how he feels um, African migrants uh, specifically are being treated as second class citizens when they come to Africa uh, to Europe but also he's criticizing European politics in Africa um, and pointing out also the historical historical continuity of exploitation etc and specifically um, pointing out the indifference of the people in the bus the indifference of the Europeans to the situation that seems to have become normalized Mm -hmm. um, so he wants to create a little bit of um, um, disorder, let's say. And then um, um, a Flemish, uh, white Flemish guy gets up in the bus and, and comes to him and asks him to maybe tone it down a little bit. He says he understands his points, but it's not really the time nor the place for this kind of uh, discourse. And then the rest of the film is the awkward confrontation between these two men that have difficulty understanding each other. Oof, yeah, that's a difficult one because it was, um, I was working on um, sort of a plan that was way too ambitious in the end, uh, trying to kind of make an image of Brussels um, and all the different cultural ethnic groups living together and somehow overlapping and creating here maybe frustrations there maybe inspirations so i was thinking of a lot of different scenes that could somehow uh, say something about life in the streets in brussels uh -huh. um, and then i noticed that it was i i like to work with long scenes uh -huh. um, that really can build something up um, over this real-time thing, you know, that you feel like you take the baggage of the beginning of the scene with you and it starts to build. And uh, then I notice, yeah, all my scenes are too long. <laughs> <laughs> and this cannot uh, fit in like a 15-minute thing. So I went from first seven to five to three, and then I was still feeling the difficulty of, okay, I felt this was the most uh, important scene for me. Um, so I made that one a little bit longer, but then I was struggling with the fact of what do I put next to it? And how am I going to create a unity uh, without sort of making one or the other less important or putting it on the side a little bit. So then I just decided, okay, I cut everything. I focus really on this thematic. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, then that's basically... Uh, sort of how I came to this. Yeah, yeah, this was definitely part of it from the beginning, because my previous film is also, it has two scenes, which are also both one shot, one from very far and one from similar distance. And um, so, yeah, I, I tend to just imagine the scene as a not as from a pers perspective of one person but more as a dynamic between a group of people mm -hmm. and then um, in my previous film we filmed it in the public space and uh, there were actually people crossing by like the, I, I called it jokingly free extras you know they're just walking around and because we put the camera in a hidden place <laughs> they don't know they're being filmed but they're also not recognizable so it doesn't really pose any problems in in a way mm -hmm. um so did, we did have that thing of real people in uh in the film even at some point um interacting with the actors mm -hmm. and so i did think about it again for this film 
Um, but then kind of quickly came to the conclusion that this was a whole different type of energy <laughs> 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 and uh, even more charged situation that I don't want to put people in and then tell them afterwards is fake. And also you don't know how people react when they see this kind of stuff. So I also didn't want to put the actors in danger. Uh, so yeah, we decided to just stage everything, but still give it the same type of uh, of aesthetic. Yeah, it was it was really nice actually. It was a really nice day. Everyone was yeah. Also for the extras, it's different because they're not waiting eight hours to get fifteen minutes of action. It's like everyone is the whole time busy. And you're all there together in this bus doing this kind of uh, crazy ballet uh, together. And it creates a kind of group energy, which is really nice. Um, yeah. What I did le learn from the previous film and also knew that, okay, now we're in the bus, we're driving in the city. Um, there's less room for sort of a mistake or, or trying things out. So we did prepare really... Uh, very detailed and, and and very well so uh, everything we knew everything already when we started the shooting day and then we still needed eight shots um, to to get it uh, done that was the whole day but yeah. Um, um, yeah so eight shots yep eight shots <laughs> and then we did like uh we had a test day with uh the main actors and some extras that did did like some crucial blocking uh parts and there we also did it six more times and of course we re rehearsed everything in the studio before so we knew already between the main actors how it was and okay yeah. so there there were many rehearsals before right yeah yeah Uh, I think it did already quite quickly come up. I don't remember actually what was before because it was probably not really from the, the first moment. But I did already know that I wanted it to end like with everyone uh, there. Mm -hmm. And then I was thinking, okay, this pushing out thing. And I remember that I was starting, I felt some kind of weird giggly energy when I came up with the idea of him jumping back on. <laughs> because then it creates such an awkward situation like uh, it builds up to this moment that actually everyone wants to avoid getting physical and then yeah. you think okay we just do it but then we're over it maybe some people like the pushers maybe think that yeah. and then actually um, uh, Samuel jumps back on the bus and <laughs> brings also the baggage of that back into the bus and then you have to deal with it again like we just did that to you yeah. and, and then um, yeah, for me, I think uh, everything is set already at that point. And uh, I didn't think there would be any sort of extra value in then you know, it be getting f physical or like the, the violence is not necessarily physical, but it uh, was clearly there already in the way of speaking. And then this, this maybe this act of pushing out. And I think it's also quite uh, ambiguous in the sense of what does this uh, mean? You know, the fact that he's sitting down there, now he's silent, he's not speaking anymore, but he is sitting uh, in front of the bus uh, next to this uh, a kind of uh, sort of archetypical Flemish woman. Yeah. So he is taking his place in the bus, but on the other hand, he is no longer voicing this counter narrative so yeah um yeah so i studied at Kask in ghent and i think it's an amazing school i really enjoyed it for me specifically it was kind of nice because i came from uh doing studying six years of philosophy and art history in university spending already a lot of time inside these lecture halls uh learning uh, texts and stuff like that so i was a bit done with that in a way yeah. and uh in Kask, it's all about doing so um 
and yeah, it's about doing and the exercises you get, they are usually rather free. So mm -hmm. for example, in the first year, you have to make 12 short films mm -hmm. in total. Wow. We have a fiction, documentary and experimental film and you do everything. Uh, there are no departments. It's just like you have one class that is doing everything that can later in the study specialize a little bit more. But mm -hmm. yeah, every, everyone is doing everything also. So you're doing the sound on uh, on your uh, classmates' film. You're doing a camera on another classmates' film. And basically, everyone is busy with making all the time and experimenting by and learning by doing in a way. So I think that's a really, really nice uh, thing. Uh, the crossover also of, yeah, you have to do documentary and fiction both. So I think that's kind of fruitful uh, as well for most people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, what else is nice about it? I know the teachers are very nice and... and, and... <laughs> That's so, enough. Yeah. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I have to point out one thing that I think is a little bit of a shame, but it's also, on the other hand, the strength of the school, uh, it really searches and inspires kind of uh, students to find their visual language mm -hmm. and to not approach the film first through, especially in fiction, but also in documentary. Uh, through like a scenario or plan and then kind of think how you work it out but really from the base thinking about it as an audiovisual audiovisual thing and maybe sometimes adding the story later or so yeah working more from um, observation experimentation with the camera but then I do think that we don't really get a lot of training in screenplay writing for example mm -hmm. Uh, which I still think has an enormous value to add into filmmaking. And uh, there's also this kind of suspicion towards dialogue that I find a shame because I love dialogue. <laughs> and I think so many stuff happen inside dialogue, actually. Yeah. It's not just like, uh, like sometimes people say like, yeah, you have to show, don't tell, you know, so you have to avoid dialogue. But actually for me, dialogue is action. It's... Mm -hmm things that people are trying to do to each other and the and the 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 language is just a tool so yeah. i think if you train on that and try to understand that that's uh, yeah it's so essential to the human experience that i feel like we have to put a little bit more focus on it but uh yeah you cannot do everything mm -hmm.